Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations to you. I think you and your ranking member will, will learn that when uh, my priorities come up, they always start with an A, and it's not Arkansas, no offense, but it's Arctic. And my friend from Hawaii, I think, is, uh, has, has learned that this uh, big Pacific Ocean has warm spots and, and colder spots, but uh, from the defense perspective, it is uh, clearly an area uh, of interest. So I want to, to start my questions uh, directed to you, Secretary Niemeyer, and this relates to our Arctic strategy. Uh, last May, Deputy Secretary uh, of Defense Work spoke about the Arctic not being a central concern in the 2014 National Defense Strategy. We now have the newly published 2018 National Defense Strategy Summary. It also does not specifically highlight the Arctic region nor address the Arctic infrastructure. So I'd like it if you can provide me just a, a brief update on uh, the Department of Defense's vision for posture and infrastructure in the Arctic region. And I'll ask specifically, when I'm talking about infrastructure, it's more than just installation. Uh, Reese, uh, I think it was just a couple days ago I read an article about Russia's uh, plans to lay trans-Arctic uh, fiber cap cable that will link the military installations starting in western Russia, bordering Norway, across the Arctic to the Pacific. And supposedly it's going to allow them real-time monitoring of the operational situation in the Arctic. Uh, as you know, we're pretty limited in the U.S. Arctic when it comes to infrastructure in general. We're making some good developments with, uh, with fiber, but should we be prioritizing uh, linking our installations with high-speed fiber? So we don't have too much time to talk about it, but if you can give me your views, that would be appreciated. Yes, ma'am. I'll keep it uh, short and sweet. Um, the the questions about an Arctic policy, um, that's a little bit beyond my capability where it's in the DOD position. I'm the installations and energy guy. I will say that from our perspective with our world, uh, Alaska is the center of the un known universe right now. We uh, have Music to my ears. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a missile field we're putting in, the fourth missile field, the Greeley. We have a billion dollar long range screenish radar that we're trying, that we're getting installed. We have a backup power supply in this year's budget to go ahead and support that. IELTSON's getting two F 35 squadrons. I'm actually going up to Alaska in June, specifically because I want to make sure that these projects are on track. Uh, they're absolutely critical to our nation's defense. Um, so I'm, I, I can't really test to the fact that I, I do know that the national defense strategy says that our homeland is along our sanctuary. Alaska is part of our homeland. Um, I do know that it's very high in, in my part, at least, to make sure that we are delivering capabilities within the state of Alaska. We're also working on uh, innovative potential power solutions um, to include what we can do for more dedicated power sources for, more, for our critical assets there. Um, we've been studying that area for small uh, modular reactors for years. Uh, we do believe that there's a potential for us to be able to take advantage of the emerging technologies there. So um, Alaska is always in our thoughts as far as uh, what we're working day to day within my portfolio. Well, I'd, I'd like further conversation about uh, just that broader view because I think we recognize that we can put in that hard infrastructure, but you also have to have the reliable power yep. in a cold place. And so the exploration into this idea of what we might be able to do with SMRs or the micro uh, reactors, um, but also from the from the broadband capacity perspective, you you need to have reliability a, as well, and so these are these are key strategic investments that uh, we'd like to have further focus in conversation. General Green, uh, thank you for for noting what we were able to do in the CR, making sure that the um, the approaching uh, arrival of the F 35s that that is going to be staying on 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 time on track. We are. We are very keen in our focus on, as you say, Secretary Niemeyer, making sure that that moves forward uh, with, with, without, um, without complications. Two things. Um, uh, we've heard that with the prospect for, for steel tariffs that uh, they might, this might impact the cost of the projects related to the bed down. Do you expect any reprogramming um, that will be necessary within the budget uh, or, or having to involve us in that aspect of it? Ma'am, we're, we're watching that closely along with our friends and we have not seen an indication yet that that's gonna be required. Good. 
Good, appreciate that. And then with respect to, to the bed down itself, I continue to hear concerns from folks in the community up there, uh, the builders particularly, that the risk of constructing off-base housing is higher without the assurances from the Air Force that you're not going to move forward with new privatized housing on base that would then compete with the off-base construction. So uh, this is something that I may raise again uh, with the Secretary when she comes before the Defense Subcommittee, but I, I hope that you could convey my interest in providing the community builders the assurances that they're hoping for. It seems that uh, the discussions are are a little bit better right now. I'm going to be up there um, next Friday for our annual salute to the military. That again gives me an opportunity to be intersecting with not only the folks on the civilian side but our military uh, in these discussions. So I'm I'm hopeful that uh, we're going to be in a good place. But any assurances that you can give the community um, about the Air Force intent on the housing side, I think, is greatly appreciated. Yes, ma'am. We, we have not uh, begun any discussions about increasing housing privatization there, to, to my knowledge. So I will, I will go back and ask the question again, but um, I'm not sure where this keeps coming from. Okay, good. Well, I, I appreciate that. Mr. Chairman, I have two more quick questions that um, I'd just like to, to raise for their awareness, and we can do follow-up. One is, is Galena Forward operating location, and this again is for you, General Green. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was up in Galena which hosted the former Galena Forward Operating Location. It has site, uh, the Air Force has some site uh, op restoration obligations. The RAB was out there just after my visit, so I'm hoping that we can get some kind of a, a, a brief on what came from those conversations, just so I can understand where the Air Force and the community are coming from and if we're all on the same page. Yes, ma'am, we can get you a brief on that, and uh, we, we certainly work hard to stay aligned with the community. I appreciate that, and I know that they do as well. And then final question, um, General Bingham. This is, uh, this is related to the Fort Greeley School. You may be familiar with it, but this is something that is an issue that just seems to defy resolution. Um, the the school, rural school district inherited the building, which was constructed by the federal government to educate the kids there at Fort Greeley. Uh, the district can't afford to maintain the school. They've moved out. The Army's proposed to send the school district the bill for demolishing the building. The school district can't afford it. They can't deal with the disposal of the asbestos. So we've, we've been in extensive discussions uh, with the Army. They just haven't gone anywhere. But I just I don't see where it's in anyone's best interest to put these small rural um, uh, school districts in financial peril. So I'm just hoping that we're going to be able to to come to uh, a more amicable solution and look for teams on this. Thank you, Senator Murkowski. And I remember last year uh, when you asked me that question, and I remember saying that we wanted to be good neighbors. Uh, we wholeheartedly, too, appreciate the school district educating our children there at Fort Greeley. And so to that end, uh, we've done a couple of things, though, since we last talked about this. Uh, we've uh, working with the uh, school district uh, at the request of the garrison to extend the lease to provide us additional time to help work through an amicable solution. Uh, we in the Army have offered to defray costs associated with the landfill there. And I'm wondering, though, if we might continue to work with you and your team to help per perhaps look at a legislative solution for local uh, educational agencies for this type of unique uh, situation. We are happy to explore uh, solutions that will work for the community, for the school district, and, and for Army. So thank you. Thank you. And